All right, so let's switch to English. Um, what we've been doing here for the past 15 to 20 minutes is, is demonstrating the managed private endpoints cap capability introduced earlier this year to Microsoft Fabric. So this concerns of, of uh, how to connect to various data sources using private connections from Fabric. And uh, as this image or diagram here um, shows us, uh, it only includes the Spark clusters, which will be deployed to a managed VNet whenever the managed private endpoint configuration is applied. And there are pr both pros and cons in in this one so the pro is pretty pretty obvious but the con of this configuration is the fact that you can you no longer have the starter pool available as such instead the pool will be deployed to the managed vnet when you start running your code so for instance running this first cell here took about two minutes and 44 seconds due to the fact that the first two minutes were actually spent creating the cluster into the VNet. So some of us may be familiar with Fabric's user experience when you don't need to deploy the Spark cluster into a VNet, in which case it actually spins up in, well, it's actually already up and running for you under the hood. So all everything you do is actually uh, initialize the Spark session, which takes around five to 10 seconds. So if you don't need the managed VNet configuration, then your Spark cluster will be uh, available for queries a lot faster. And on the other hand, if you need this additional layer of security, then, then it's a really good addition that we can actually con uh, now configure these private endpoints. So what I did was I went to workspace settings and here under network security, I config configured a private endpoint by clicking create and then uh, giving it a name. The resource identifier can be found under the resource here uh, on Azure portal. So under properties, you can just copy and paste the resource ID from here. So this is what I did, copied it from here and uh, pasted it over here and then I just gave it a name. So this is this is what I uh, did and then I just click on create, but this is not obviously necessary right now because we already have a working private endpoint here that we just used earlier. Um, and this, this private endpoint functionality only right now comes with either to the trial capacity or with fabric capacity that is at least F64 or above. So right now for this demo, I'm using the trial capacity to have the managed private endpoint functionality for us. Um, other than that, are there any questions regarding regarding uh, this one? I assume that that it doesn't make sense for me to redo the demo because I assume that you were already able to follow it, although I was speaking, talking, talking in Finnish earlier when I did the demo previously. Okay, thanks. Thanks for the confirmation, Marina. So um, per perhaps the last thing I can leave you with is, is obviously to demonstrate that this actually does have the or the that the connection doesn't there's no connectivity unless we actually use the private endpoint so to prove that there is actually a firewall in place so what I can do is go here go to workspace settings and you just saw this configuration working like five minutes ago. So let me go ahead and delete this um, 
managed private endpoint. Looks like I get an unknown error, which is pretty awesome during a demo, demo session, but let's see if I'm, I'm still able to delete it. Uh, Arto has his hand up at this point. Moikki. Jos voi ihan suomeksi kysyä tarkemmasta yhteen, kun olin muistiinpanoissa, että <köhön> Fabrik ei tue tuota self-hosted integration runtimea. Joo. Niin mitenkäs tämmöinen, äh, miten me saataisiin tämä private endpointin kautta kulkemaan se data, jos me pitäisi on-premisesta saada Legacy-tietokannasta, käytännössä DP2, dataa Fabrikiin? Joo, eli niin kun data faktorin käytetään. Datafaktorin kanssa käyttiin sitä self-hosted integration runtimea ja nyt sitten tuota, vastaus samaan, tai saman ongelman fabrikin kanssa ratkaisee on-premises data gateway. Eli se on sitten se, se tuota, Joo. samantyyppinen palikka, joka kanssa asennetaan sinne omaan konesaliin ja, ja, ja sellaiseen aliverkkoon, että sillä on suora yhteys niihin niin tietolähteisiin, joita sieltä mm. halutaan käyttää, ja samaan tyyliin se sitten käytännössä yhdistää niihin ja puskee sen datan tuonne pilven puolelle. Se on käytännössä, no meillähän, joo, siis on se käytössä sekin Power BI käytössä vai, mutta se on siis niin jatkossa se on nimenomaan se, millä me saadaan kai myös tämä data-integraatiovaiheiden data kuljetettua. Joo, juuri näin, että se laajenee sitten sen käyttö tälle puolelle nyt, nyt mikä on ehkä ihan kätevää sitten, että meillä on, meillä on yksi yksi tota, softa tässä paketissa, joka ratkaisee kaikki samantyyppiset ongelmat sitten. Kyllä. Yes. Great. Kiitoksia. So, kiitos. And, uh, and, so, and regarding, Oscar, regarding the deletion, I don't know, but I would assume that as you have the Spark session alive, then the deletion probably is not, not working, because it has to kind of The infrastructure will need to change, so kind of as long as you have the session going going on, it, it could be that it's not might done. be, might be, might be. Let's stop the session and uh, retry. Ah, uh, but it's gone now. Perfect. So perhaps <laughs> it was just pending for for the yeah. Spark session to stop and then. Then when I stopped it, it was actually able to retry under the hood and delete it immediately. But it's perfect that it's still giving me unknown error for, for some reason. Anyways, so now the last thing to check is, of course, we can retry running this code and see what happens without the private endpoint. And obviously, this now should fail and giving us a hopefully giving us a specific error message about the firewall that would be perfect for troubleshooting reasons. No, I'm not sure about that kind of five second startup time that what what is yeah. infra infrastructure change behind the scenes when you delete yeah. the private endpoint so kind of it could be that we are now in some kind of intermediate phase where where at least five seconds didn't happen because it's already one one minute but. yeah yeah i agree i've i've seen this type of behavior earlier as well so When you change a configuration and in immediately try to do stuff, it, it might be in some occasions that that things don't work out immediately as as you would expect. So there's some some sort of a delay, I would assume, regarding this this configuration change. So ultimately, I, I'm sure that it will go back to the five seconds startup time sooner or later but looks like at least immediately it didn't happen instead it really needed to ramp up the cluster with almost two minute delay so let's see if we get those expected results here okay great so yeah 
Good, good. Cannot log in. Client ID is not allowed access to server. Great. So I think this includes our managed private endpoint demo for today. Thank you. Thank you all. Kiitos.